they're going to try to lay it in or at worst get to that drop box. Okay? If they take one dribble hard here and throw it this way, we call that an up. Okay? If they get the ball right here and they just advance it real quick, that's called a pitch. Okay, so pitching is just advancing the ball, and up is where you try to take it off the dribble and then you throw it. Okay? So that's important because you may have people that you don't want dribbling the ball, so you can always say pitch. So just advance the ball one direction. When this person kicks it to this person, they sprint to the corner. Okay. So we have a word back. So back is anytime you throw the ball back from where it came. So kick, come up out of here, get it, drive it, sprint, back is a throwback. get to the drop box here, it's going to drive it to this drop box right here. Okay. Coming up would be a kick, back door is a drop. So if I said kick drop, like if I said we want to write kick drop, we get to the drop box, kick, then get to the other drop box, back door cut. Okay. <coughs> Duck is a post, post duck in. So the post is always circling up. So if they see the eyes of the person coming out, they get opposite. Okay? That's why these people that come around here and they start playing with the ball in this area, they screw you up. They're, go they're allowed to take one, one change of direction. They could hesitate once. But then they got to figure out where to go. Otherwise, this person's in no man's land. Okay, so if we were just going kickback duck, so one drives it hard, two comes out, throw it, hard drive, sprint back. When this person sees the eyes of the ball, they should be circling. The ball's here. Their man's probably somewhere in here. That ball gets thrown here. They try to seal them up with paint angles, so all they got to do is lay it in. So kick back duck would be a throw back duck in. So three words, you got three actions. Okay, that's why, we, like when Vance was doing it, he had a kick back, throw back, duck in. Or loop, I think he used the word loop. So, so we, just, we just tried to make it more like what is actually happening. Okay. Then we have um, fist. Fist is a ball screen. Kick fist would be like, let's say one goes to the drop box, two comes out. On the throw there, kick fist, that person's sprinting out there. Trying to go ball swing. So fist is any time you want the five to come out the ball swing. So you could go kick back fist. So kick back fist would be, what would it be, Lindsay? The one that's getting it at the corner and on the ball screen. Right, that's exactly right. I skipped a few steps, but you got me. Okay, got me. Okay, throughs. Throughs. Through is when you want to start the action. So you can go through kick. Okay, so through is just a cut through to change sides of the floor. Okay. Now 
Now we have different throughs. It's always a short through unless we tell them differently. We could say long through. If it's a long through, then this person will come up and fill that spot. Short through, long through. <laughs> you have you can run out of name. When you start cutting through, there's different things you can do. We have what we call rub cuts. Okay, so that would be like this. Let's say I throw it here. That would be kind of a rub cut. Okay, you're going to drive it off my shoulder. Okay. You can have the problem with those types of cuts, they're good until they people scout you. And then what happens is when people scout you and you run like this, they're going to switch that. Okay? So if they're switching it, what you do is you tell them to run a nail hole cut. So now I run to the nail hole. Now the switch is so far, it's such a, there's such distance, it becomes harder to get that. Okay. Kickback flash, um, that would be like on a one, two, kick, back, flash. So flash is when you get the five flashing right into the high focus What did you put about baseline? Uh, well, you could, you could actually drive a baseline. Oh. Because what you've done is oh, you, your help is now going to come too removed. Got it. So you have them come up onto the same side uh, over and over? Yeah, they, they, they would come up in this area. We, we, we don't okay. really give them an area. Just try to catch the ball somewhere in there. Okay. Like a zone plug we do is... So we do a kick, we're playing this a zone. Throw it back. Post a little bit higher. Kick back, duck. Okay, that's always open against the zone. So if you don't know whether they're playing zone or not, that's a good play to run. Yeah. Just to, to because the center's going to take that. Right. So you're going to end up having a where you put your uh, offset ring at still uh, or high post, do they? They're right like this. Okay, so they stay like open window. I guess that's like an open window. Okay, so that's terminology. have a post, like what we're doing now, we don't have a post now, okay? So we're going to take advantage of that by creating, like, here's how we do it when we have a post. Our two would run as fast as they can here, and three would run as fast as they can there. And those two could be interchangeable. So it doesn't matter. The one would get the outlet pass, and if they don't pass it ahead within one dribble, they're slicing the floor, five would run to the rim or four would run to the rim, and then four would get in the, four or five would be in that trail spot, okay? They're running all the way to the corner, and we're telling this person to go lay it in, okay? If they can advance the ball in one or two, one, one or two passes, either way, they can do that. But if they can't, they have to cross the floor. 
which means you've at least had one ball reversal if you slice the four. Okay, so that really helps you. Getting them to slice the four, and they need to go over, they need to slice the floor before half court. So it's like we had one kid, she's taking one, two dribbles here, and it takes too long. If you're going, and you gotta start figuring it out, so that if you can't advance it, you're slicing the floor. What you're going to have to do, the post then should have this post should be on the opposite side of them. They should have post feed layup. Or you should be able to round the corner, lay it in, and that post is running a legal screen because they're posting. Okay? Right. I'm sure you guys do some of that stuff. Yeah, I don't know if we do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we do it on purpose. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just picturing my. We call for the ball. We tell our post to be calling for the ball with their hands up. Yeah. yeah. Back up. Back up. Okay. Um, so that's that's our transition. If we don't have like now, we're running the Semesco stuff and the dribble drive. Semesco stuff is like motion to dribble drive. So now what we're doing, like. If teams know what you're doing for this, like most teams run stuff like this, so you run your players to those spots and transition defense. So they run right into you, which is an like you, that it's hard to get, like you're always going to get matched up the way you want. Right. So what we do, what we're doing now, because we don't have a true post and we really don't care who's in every spot, yeah. we have like four. Three kids, I think, that can dribble. If they get the rebound, they can bring it. We have two kids that, if they get the rebound, they have to outlet it to the point guard. Okay? The first person to this spot, going this way, yells rim. So they're going to the rim. It could be our two. It could be our three. It could be our four. It could be our five. Then everybody else is running wide outside these cones here. Okay? So if there's three people on this side, they never cross the sides. So they're gonna keep 15 foot spacing on this side. If there's balance, it's fine. What you find is when you run out of balance, you're gonna end up getting a layup a lot because they, they screw up, like they don't know where you're at. And they're running around trying to match up. So I learned that from Jaber at Dayton. He just does it. They just run with the side that they're on. So, so that, that alone creates opportunities for easy baskets. Okay. Now if this is a guard, we would end up coming out and back screening one of the posts and then we could just be normal. Yeah. Don't worry about it so much. Like sometimes we want to make it look all perfect, and by making it look perfect, it's predictable. The general rule is if you're a guard, you can go back screen them person that you like down there and then we're fine. We also let our post we run this as well. But let our post come down push the guard out. Rotate everybody up around whatever they want to do. Like we'll call a set. We have a set for a back screen on the post of the trailer coming. So we'll call that out otherwise their rule is just to go down and push that guard out in whatever direction they go. That's who rotates up and around. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I think you're probably talking to two coaches here that don't have posts either, so. <laughs> Five nine. <laughs> we'll take it. All right. Let's let's talk about some of the things that you can do with this. That once, people, once you get the basic, let's talk about how you're going to drill it every day. That's the first thing. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to play three on three. Got this circle here.
So you go offense, defense, off. You have a coach right here with the ball. They're on full sprint. As soon as they get to the front part of the circle, you give them the ball. They're going full speed. This person has to stay in the circle until this person gets in the circle. So that's giving a huge advantage for the person running with the ball. They should lay it in. Okay. They're, they can go to either drop box. Okay. If they're right-handed, they're probably going this way. Okay. So then they're trying to lay it in. If they can't lay it in, they got to stop in that drop box. Okay. And then we're going to play out of this. So we're going to have a kick. They're going to go back. This person's are short going. So we're playing with a, a perimeter, a, a point guard, and a post. One thing I did kind of neglected was you want to lay it in or you want to get to the drop box. If I'm driving it this way, and let's say I have this wing right here, they stay in the corner. If I stop in that drop box right there, okay, they're staying there because this person right here. Like, we don't, this person here stays in the corner until they either get to this drop box or they get past this drop box. If they get, once they get past this drop box, they should be coming to right there. And that should be a blind pass. Call this the drag zone. Because basically what's going to happen is you get your five over here your defender of the five is going to go help. And if any time this person sees their man with a foot in this lane right here, they should be yelling drag, and we should have a wide open shot there. And drag automatically turns into a ducking. Okay, so you've got the drop box, the drag zone, and the finish zone. On the finish zone, like the first thing they're going to want to do is they're going to throw this bounce pass right there. We never let them throw a bounce pass. They have to throw the ball up. Just get it on the glass. <clears throat> if you have a 5'9 person who rebounds the heck out of it, they got great angles to rebound. They should be able to get every rebound. Okay, and then we do a lot of quick ups. So I got two ball, two, I'm just throwing one right after another. All that person do is catch light in, catch light in. That's what they got to be able to do over and over and over. Yeah. We do a drill called Kirby shooting because when we do it with our whole team, because Greg Kirby gave it to me, I gave him credit for it. It's Kirby shooting. <laughs> he won 85% of his games, then he was my assistant. And I asked him, what is the most important thing in high school? And he said, the first thing is girls miss layups. And there's a lot of shots that occur within five to ten feet of that bat, that rim. So what we do is they got one ball, one person. Everything's a bank shot. You got to keep the ball high. You got to get as many as you can in a minute. First time you do it, they're going to be about 25. Our best, our six-six kid was getting 43 in a minute. Everything's a bank shot. So you're accomplishing a lot by that. One, they should get to the 30s. That's going to help them get it off quicker. They can't bring it down. And two, every shot has to be a bank shot. How many shot times do they get in there and they don't know whether they're going to bank it or not? You're eliminating all that. They're going to bank everything. So that, that singly helped us with the shots around the basket. Okay? Are they by themselves in that? Do they have a rebound their own? By themselves. They're rebounding their own. Five to ten feet. Like I'm going all the way around. Get out of the net, taking the next shot, and they gotta keep it up high. Like you watch them the first time, they'll be missing, they're all over the place. And then eventually your your, your kids should get 30 to 35 in a minute. Okay? Alright, so that's three on three. Then what we do is go four on four, put people in two corners, a post. And we play without this extra person up here. 
that person up here gets in the way. So they have to always stay opposite the action. That becomes a little bit of a problem, just trying to keep them opposite. So if the ball is being driven here, they want to stay wide and high. Now let's talk about um, ways people guard you. A lot of people will sit here like this. They're going to guard you like this. When you come here, they're going to switch almost like a 2-3 zone, but it's not a 2-3 zone, but it looks like a 2-3 zone. So here are the things that you can do to do that. Kick 34. So we come here. Um, Drive it, kick back. This person's coming here, flaring the four. Okay. teams that really switch hard and play on the health line, like Green Bay. <coughs> this is this is what you Okay, they, they, they're able to match up here and match up here because you're always in balance, so you got to do something to get it out of balance. So we go push. So push is like this. One dribbles here, and remember, they're just switching blindly. Okay? So we're going to send four here, three up to the short corner, okay? Now when we do that, what happens is this person in the corner doesn't go to begin with because they see this person coming. So then this person's open in the short corner. Then when this person goes, <coughs> this person doesn't always go because they're waiting for the next person up here. This is what you do when they're switching hard, okay? So now you can have action where you go pinch post, back cut, hand off, duck in. You can do anything you want out of that. Or you could just catch it and drive it. Okay. And we tell this person, try to catch it as deep so you can catch it, get to the rim in one dribble. Okay. So that's a push play. That works very well against Green Bay because they're pretty pretty. teams will do too is they'll train these two guards up here to be up here and switch and then they'll tra train these people to be here post to slide over other posts to be opposite so they've trained three people they've trained these bottom people to get inside the post if you're guarding the bottom person post to help across okay that's how they do that's how they'll do it what we found is a lot of teams don't train these people how to guard on the baseline they only have so much time. So anytime this person back dribbles, that's a code for elevate. So when we elevate and we pass to the two, we're going to make basket cuts. We could say elevate three pass. So that's going to be one, two, three. On the third pass, it's now a rub cut. Until then, it's a basket cut fill. So we're going to make basket cuts fill. If we go elevate four, that means we're going to go four pass, four passes, and on the fourth pass, we're making the the uh, rub cut. So you got to make these kids look for the ball because they're going to catch. They're going to get a layup the first time because they're. They're, they're kind of zoning you out. Okay. You can also do the same thing when you elevate these people, make the one to four pass, 
basket cut fill, do it across the top. So I would train your kids how to do it both ways. And then have a code for when it stops being pass a cut to the rim and turns into dribble drive. Just that movement alone creates some problems for people. Okay? Especially if you're less talented. If you're less talented, you gotta get them moving and then you can attack. That's why I like the Semesco stuff's not good if you're not skilled. Okay, so but this stuff is easily done. It's basically you're just doing it for a short time and then you're attacking. This is a low turnover law. Okay, so okay, so we got elevate, and then we got this is this is the one I really like. I call this bobber. Okay, so when we elevate, on this pass right here, what typically happens is this person goes here. This person comes here. Okay. On a bobber cut, what we do is we replace ourselves, throw it, and on that throw, we make our go cut, and then we drive the gap. So you've flipped it, and you've opened up the opposite side. So if they're pushing you away, you open up the other side. Does three then go back down? Three would go down and fill. So bob or fist, like if you go bob or fist, that's going to become a flat ball screen going to your left. From the five still? Yeah. So the five's going to run up there on the replace yourself on this throw. They're going and they're coming from the flat screen. So we let our kids play. <clears throat> and then what I do is oh, I sit on the bench and I see where are they helping from. So all I'm doing is I'm watching that defense. I'm watching those bottom people. Mm -hmm. Is that person inside, is the person guarding the corner on the side that we're going away from? Are they inside, they have two feet inside that lane. And what we try to get our back, the back, like if they've driven this way and I'm the corner person, all I'm doing is I'm reading my man. Once I get a foot in the lane, I'm yelling drag. And that's our verbal. And the, they don't have to throw it to me, but they know they have that. Right. They have that skip because there is no help there. They're in the lane. They have a foot in the lane. So you have to get your, because it's impossible to be attacking the rim and see that inside defender. But if you hear drag, you know, I'm safe right now. I could throw it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like when we're practicing, like if you have a, like the assistants, what we do is we put you on the put you on a side and you just sit there and you look at the defense. You should be on drag, like you're just constantly reinforcing those corner people what they're doing. So on the side of the ball, that corner person, you're saying wait, late, 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 be yeah. late because yeah. they want to be early. Right. Okay. And then they want to dance. They can't figure out whether they're going to go for a kick or a drop. Right. So we say be decisive. You can make a decision. Okay. And one thing I didn't tell you, Lindsay, is on drop. Mm -hmm. So let's say we come here and the two goes back door. So the five's right here. Okay? The five can play it all. They're going to duck and lift. If we don't throw this pass, they're going on through. We're going to throw that pass. We're going to make a go cut, and this person's ripping and going. Do you give them any options with that, or do they just know that that's what's happening? That's what's happening. Okay. 
Now our six six can we just let her go right to that? Can we just throw it to her from right there? We didn't let her go up there. Because she was we just throw it up to her from right there. I don't have any six six. We don't either. <laughs> So we've got, um, we got the elevate, we've got the push, we've got the bobber, 34. Okay, kick, pitch, pitch. Okay, I'm just giving you good combinations. This is like good kick, pitch, pitch is better than going one four low in my opinion. So who's your best? Who's your best um, driver? What position? Yeah. Point guard. Point guard. Okay. So. So here's what you do. Let's say you want to get a shot through the one. You want to go pitch, pitch to the one. Okay, so you'll elevate. Cut. Fill. Fill. Elevate, pitch, pitch. So they go past it here. They go there. They pass it there. They make it go there. They pass it there. Catched above the free throw line extended. Go there, make a go cut. Now you have a super gap. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to keep going. That's elevate pitch pitch. That would be an elevate pitch pitch. Or you can go kick pitch pitch if your person on this side can drive it. Okay. That's a way to just get the ball back in your point guard's hands. So the pitches are always followed by a go cut. Now one of the things we do, let's say we did this kick, pitch, pitch, and we were going to have our three drive it from the, the, left, from the left side to the right side. So on this right here, drive it, or they don't, they just throw it to the four. <coughs> throw it to the two. They throw it to the four. On this on this, like they aren't dribbling it, they're just throwing it. It's a basket cut and then out. And this is deeper, so they can't switch it. And then this person's going to screen that person. The last cutter is going to screen the first cutter, and they're going to get behind the ball because they're driving it on this side. There's, there's a, it's a super gap with a shooter right there. Okay. That's a killer play. Where's the three catching that on the second pitch? They have to catch pitch? it. Yeah, you, you want this person that's going to drive it to catch it above as high as it can so they can drive it right through there. Yeah. It's impossible to keep the ball out of the lane yeah. with that movement. So pistol, we come down here, let's say we're running pistol now. We're going to stop, throw it ahead, okay? You got your four trailing. You're coming to get the handoff. Okay, so the actions that can happen. Hang on, is this like, is pistol common knowledge or something? Pistol is our transition break that you're going to get in from the NBA. Oh, okay. This is transition. We can just say, hey, we want to run pistol now. And we tell our point guard that if she wants to get it back, like Demings, this is great for Demings. Demings can't dribble, but she can run. So she's so she's going to advance the ball, and then she's just going to sprint past her man, get a handoff, and that way it's eliminate her dribbling the ball. Okay. <laughs> Especially going left, it was much better. Okay. Because she can't dribble with her left hand. So we go... Get it here, and, and normally, normally, they're, they're just going to go as fast as they can, and we're going to get through, give it a little handoff, okay? Just pitch the ball in. Okay, so what can happen here is the trail then comes into this area right here. So if we hand it to the one coming here, the five is right here, she can try to drive it and lay it in. If she back dribbles, then the two is inside the four, and we get a flare. 
And on the back dribble, then we can either re-attack or we could throw it to the two off the flare and then attack. So that's if they hand it off. If the two fake hands it off, like you pitched it to me, you go by me, I don't hand it off, the four automatically becomes a ball screen. If your five really sucks, okay, you can you can on the back dribble. Because this is hard to guard too. On the back dribble, rather than hold them there, have them go up a flat screen and then re-attack. Because that's a different angle. Yeah. So when they back dribble, you want them to give yourself a little space off that face off. So they can go either direction. So on that back dribble, you got the flat screen and you got the flare happening at the same time. So that's the pistol action. You'll actually see that on the film with this thing. You'll see about 10 minutes of it. That's really good if you slice the floor and do a pistol and come up on the side. Okay. Do you, I've got a question. I'm just trying to read this with that uh, back screen by the five and, and uh, four <coughs> ball screen. Well, the could you set it up so that it looks like a back, you know, the five's already coming up to time it. The five, the five is sitting at home. Stays there unless they hand off? Or could well, you have well, them well, come like, up like, and look? Like on this, let's say the two is here and the one's coming by. Right. Okay? And they give them the ball. The five's staying there because they're trying to round the corner and get to the rim. Okay. On the back dribble. Oh, on the back dribble. Then the flare occurs. And you can either keep this person here, or you can have them sprint into a flat ball screen. Okay. I, I was just thinking about it. I didn't even mean to, but I misunderstood. I didn't hear the back dribble part of it. Two yeah, had the ball. One is coming off. At the same time, the five comes up to set the screen, so the timing of it. The four is coming over to set the screen, so now you've got the now you've got a super gap that you're talking about. Two can keep it, come off that ball screen, five's out of there, so is their defense, or they can roll back, or hand off to the one, and you're looking at a, uh, basically a two-on-one thing. Anyway, okay. Sorry. It, it makes sense in my world. I got it. You're not to be mean. Okay. I kind of want to write this down. And it was by mistake. So you're you're holding on the ball, not handing it off, and then either it. one, either one. But if you don't hand it off, I mean, then this could be a special call too, maybe it's an in one play or something. But yeah, if you don't hand it off, you are coming off that ball screen like you would, but you have just created, you've yeah. taken everybody yeah. out of the paint there. Right. So I just. I but the five doesn't really go because there was no back for What's that? The five doesn't know to go because there was no back dribble. Well, that's what I was saying. I didn't hear him say back dribble. Oh. Now that I see the back dribble, that, okay, that's pistol. But this could have been a special play on it to clear it out. I mean, your only help that you're going to have to beat, probably, is your three. Well, if the, like, if this person yeah. doesn't hand it off, it becomes an automatic on ball. Right. Well, when it becomes an automatic on ball, this person should start to vacate because right. this person's going to be driving down right. this side. Right. So you have a super gap going this way. Right. Right. So. I'm just, yeah. I, I was just adding this uh, decoy screen in there basically from the five for the one. Because our one of our best players is our one. So they, they always play her tight and want to switch and whatever. So they're going to come out on that. Right. This is just unpersonal right now. <laughs> they might understand what I'm saying. But... <laughs> okay, so pistol, you got that? Then uh, rip. Rip is like if you're, your one's really good, right? 
Yeah, well, our ones are three are really good. Really yeah. Okay, so on rip, let's say we come down. So we got rip. We're going to come down and we're just. It's not fast. Hang on. Why are the two and the three up? Because they're not going to make sure I wasn't missing something. Sorry. It's a pass. This right here. Okay. Five is coming up and back straight. Okay, so the four is dribbled over. Five is back screening the one. Okay? So out of that you can have the five catch it from the four and the one post up. That's the first option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second option, you can go. Um, um, rip, rescreen. So they're going to go like this, and then they're going to turn and get them again, and then you're going to throw it, go, and they're driving. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now all you've done is add a few screens involved. And then you got rip flex. So one throws it to the sorry, the four has it over here. The five back screen the one. They throw it, and rather than post, they're screening here. Just a flex cut. And then on that pass there, it's a go cut, and you're back in dribble drive. On which pass? On the pass from the five. Uh, oh, after the flex screen? Yeah, right. Okay. So, okay. do you have the four down? Yeah, the four will do it down on the screen. Gotcha. So that's all on the video that you're going to get. Oh. Okay, you're going to be able to see all those actions. The one setting the flex screen, right? Yes. So After the one, the back screen. yeah, the one, the one comes off this screen, yeah. the back screen. You could have had them post. You could have had them rescreen. I'll pass with my magic. Now you're going to have them <laughs> come back here and back screen. Perfect. Like you wouldn't want to do this unless you're, like it's yeah. really good if your one can score. Yeah. Because now they're having to guard all different sides. They don't know where. Especially if they can post. Yeah. Now that now it's a bear. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Can your four? Can your four? Tra like we did this when our five trailed. Okay. So like, you can let's say our five trailed and we don't we want our five to get down there. Like we have our four down here. We don't really like that. So we go here. Hard dribble. Hard dribble. Okay. Throw it. Hopefully they can catch it right on that one line, right there. When I duck in, we're going to dive the five. They got to be on this side of. that person up, we're going to skip it, we're going to seal, and then flash this person up there. Okay, that's a good way if they flip-flopped and you want to get them back in the post. So if your five trails, it's a good way to get your five in the post up. It's courtesy of Mark James.
flow is flow is just like the one would dribble at the five or the four, and they go with a handoff, a uh, screen, and a handoff to start the offense. And you can you can see that it's a little bit more. Like I, I think it's too much unless you're really really skilled. But, okay, next next thing. Different alignments you can do just to screw up the other team. To start, like one of our problems was we were always stagnant in starting. So these are just some of the ways we started. This would be the best shooter. So we come down the floor. We call this long. Shut up! Are you serious? Yeah. So we're like right like that. That's awesome. <laughs> like, I do stuff just to mess with people because that just screws people up. That is awesome. So, your first thing is go lay it in. <laughs> <laughs> Good quality. Well, one thing is for sure, it's going to mess up this two guard front when yeah. they're just staying there, okay? I like it. Like, like we're not going to let them do that I forever. I love this. <laughs> I can see you doing it. <laughs> so, what's going to happen here? So we look for that. What do you call this? Why? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you got the screen ends. You're looking, if they don't get it, they get to the corner. Okay. Then the four and the five turn around and they screen the three and screen the three in for the flare. is going to dive, and the four, depending on where the one is, is either going to come to this side right here and catch it. If they can catch it at the elbow, that's great. Then they can turn and rip and go. Like, we're just playing out of that. We're going to end up being in our spots, but what we've done is given a quick action. Right. And again, it was an easy way for us just to create. Our kids could not handle motion, but they could handle doing stuff like this. <laughs> So all it did is it, it got us from the point where we did we were just standing there yeah. and they know where we worked and it's really simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And we scored off this. I'm sure you did. They're gonna chase that too all the way around my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see. You got Tia coming off that triple screen right there. They won't fall on eyebrows. Okay, so that's line. And then we had wheel. Okay. And this is just taking like the mo motion from Samasco and building it into. This is your best person catching the high post. This is great whether you, if you don't know whether there's an owner or man, this will work against both. So you can throw it here, replace yourself, and we're going to screen. This is wheel one. You could have them read it, or you could just call it wheel one, wheel two, wheel three. We'll just assume they don't know anything, so you can make it wheel one, wheel two, wheel three. That's and three you can. throw it back to one? Yeah, three throws it back to okay. one. One's going to throw it to two. Three is going to come off the low cut. Five is going to pick the four, and then they're going to seal it. Then one is going to hit opposite. So now you're going to have four right here, five sealing. This is three, this is one, and this is two. Okay? So, like, the passes are 
You've got the three, the first one. You got the five ceiling, and you got the four growing here. This one's going to be wide open. Yeah. They'll get a wide open three. If you throw it here, this person slides out. This person goes under. They're going to drive it that way, and we're in the dribble drive. Okay. And you can put them wherever you want. Them. Like I'm telling you, this saved our season last year. This plug. We ran it over and over and over and over and over against zone or main. Because if you get somebody like Kim Downing's catching it in the middle, like she's catching, like if your best player catches it right there, it's very, very hard to guard. And you could run it the opposite way, like. Let's say you wanted her to drive it right. The side you pass to first, now you just go that side and throw it back. It's fast. You're just going low cut, that's what we want to see. So now it's going to be this person catching it right there, and it's going to be a right drive. Think about what this person, what we just did. She went low. This person ended up getting picked for and ended up high. Okay? Again, this is the star. That's the star. That's the one that's going to catch it in the middle. Okay? So they've had to guard her going this way. Now wheel two is we're going to take one step up and then we're going to come to the pinch post, okay? So when she does that, the five and the three just turn around right here, right like this. So now what you got is you got the five stacked on top of the three. You got the four coming hard into the pinch post. You got the one with the ball, and you got the two right here. So we're, we're going. On this pass back, they're not going to throw the ball yet. Okay? They are going to have their dribble. They're it's really important when they get that ball back, they're going to look for that kid in the pinch post. If they can throw it, they're going to turn and drive it. Okay? If they can't throw it, the one has the ball and it's a live dribble. Okay? So we're going to take one hard dribble, and the dribble signifies I'm no longer using you there. I'm having you set a double flare. So these guys are setting a double flare right there. Okay. So if you skip it off the double flare, she's going to drive baseline. If you don't skip it off the double flare, the five is diving, and then the three is catching it right in the middle, and they're going to sweep and drive. Okay. And that's gold. I'm telling you, like. If you got two players and you put them in the four spot and the three spot there, that saved us too. Those are the two plays that really helped us last year. Well, I would never help off the ball side corner on that drive. Mm -hmm. um, I would figure out how good your post is. On 
any of the crosses at the top, I try to trap it. Like on kicks, I try to trap them. You know, where they switch, I might just come over the top and just trap it. Mm -hmm. um, What I would do, okay. or just Dark sag screen. and really just sag and make them shoot. Okay. Now, one of the things we taught our kids, and I think this is really important. Like kids, they don't guard that are athletic. Mm -hmm. Like if you're playing me like this, one thing I told our kids is like, if you watch them for whatever reason, you're guarding me like this. And our kids, their first dribble now, they're going like this, okay, which I think is an utter mistake. Yeah. I think we're going to play one-on-one. -on -one. We take everybody off the floor, and I'm athletic, and I dribble like this to accomplish your mission. I am going to drive it as fast as I can right at your shoulder. Yeah. And we're going to sit there and see if you can handle, right. if you can handle, because I'm going full speed. I'm closing the gap at full speed. You're sitting there right like this. I don't think you're good enough to stop me. And I think that's a good, that's an important thing for our kids. Like if they're gapping you, that doesn't mean you have to shoot it. You can just drive it right at them. That means you got a running start and they're just st standing there. Mm -hmm. Especially the way they call the game. The reason for this offense is the way they call the game, the fouls on the dribble. Right. Oh, yeah. Like Steve Bruce called me, he was running that regular motion stuff. They were turning it over 30 times a game, not getting to the foul. Didn't you laugh at that? <laughs> and I called him, I said, your stats are horrendous. <laughs> like, you got Courtney Smith who should go to the line yeah. 20 times a game. And he never had seen us do it. I talked to, I just talked to everything we've just done. He changed it midseason. Mm -hmm. And look at his stats the second half of the season. Yeah. Turnovers went down, free throws went up. But I, just, I think it's, it's good for the skill set a lot of kids have. What did you do against Rose? Did you do anything different than that stuff? No, we, I mean, we just didn't have as many plays to get into it. Um, we just ran the motion side of it, which was pretty much everything that, like every turn you had, I had a turn that we used mm -hmm. um, for it. But then if we wanted to, um, you know, we'd run our transition, which we run a lot of the rim runners, option, doesn't matter who we are, um, and then if we get in a play, we run a set play, which the kids got to understand, see, they hated, we were the opposite, we hated set plays, they wanted to run motion, or dribble drive, and just run it with cuts and everything, but if I can somehow still have these plays with it. Yeah, what we did is we just played. And then, based on what I saw, I said, we need to get this action. Right. And then Mike would call timeout, and we call that action, mm -hmm. and then they'd play. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Like, and coming up with that kind of, you know, here's wheel, let's run wheel stuff because, you know. It'll get us, just get us some movement. Yeah. And um, I'll tell you, the other thing is, like, if your five doesn't get ahead of the ball, you got to practice this a little bit. Like, a good way to practice the transition is put 12 seconds on the shot clock. Okay. I just like to play early offense. Yeah. So we put 12 seconds on the shot clock. We're going to play two minute game, 12 second shot clock. Now if you don't get a quality shot 
within the 12 seconds, and you take a bad shot, it's coach's discretion, that's a minus three. Okay? If you just set the ball down and go back and play defense, that's nothing. Huh. That way you don't take crap that's shots. Good. Okay? Because I don't like crap shots. Yeah. So you're playing 12 seconds. We do that rather than run because it's better conditioning than yeah. run. Oh, yeah. We play seven seconds. It looks Which ugly. is good for conditioning. We don't do it for yeah. anything else. We, do, we just try to do it to get work on our early transition defense yeah. and work on our early transition offense. Right. And it's a condition. And, and then we added the, the bad shot because when I first did it, it was like they yeah. started taking. I don't want to teach bad habits. Yeah. We want to score in the first 10 to 12 seconds or use the whole clock. So what, one of the things you can train when you're doing that is the whole idea of step-up screens. So your five, if your five doesn't get down the floor as you're slicing the floor, they just turn around yeah. and they just stop and they set a flat screen wherever you are on the right. floor. And that's really good when they have somebody just picking the ball up. Because right. it becomes a blindside screen and it's, it stops the pressure. And we would do that on the on the wings. Like if the wing doesn't get ahead of the ball, they turn it into a step up screen. The post can turn it into a step up screen. Um, they, that's what Dayton does all the time. And they, they do that 10 to 12 seconds and they it's all they all say, hey, we need to get two step up screens in these next two minutes. I think you'll like the NBA stuff. Yeah. Okay. You're watching that tomorrow, right? Huh? You're watching that tomorrow. How do you guys do dribble handoffs? How do you do handoffs? How do you teach them? On the wings. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Turn. Two okay. hands. Um, I'm always challenging to this because I saw this okay. from Bob. Okay. Because we had this problem all the time. Like, we come here, hand off, they bump wood, it was slow. Mm -hmm. We come to the jump stop, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm watching them. I go down and watch practice, and they're like this. Full speed, bounce it. You're running, and you get to go. Yeah, catch and go. Huh? Yeah, they're just they're bouncing it on the floor. I'll send it to you on okay. your. I'll send it to you because I got it clipped on the. On the. It's it's pretty good. I've never seen it before, and it's so much faster. Lots of snow. I know. And there's the well, it's happening so fast. That they can't. Like it, it's happening fast. I can just see one of my kids like bouncing it off their forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we did it the first year I was here, they'd run right into each other. Yeah. They took both out. Like I dribbled right at you, and they ran right into each other. Both fell down. Nice summer in Canada. Yeah. Are you taping that? Taping what? Me. Yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> 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 